Kirsty TV is about the power of sharing stories that heal ourselves and heal others. My guests share their most intimate stories and lessons learned along the way. My guest today, Janine Francolini, struggled for years with a family history of mental health issues. In her mid-teens, this developed into an eating disorder, and by 17, she was hospitalised after her first suicide attempt. After years of struggling, she is here today to share her story. So who were you as a child? Who was I as a child? Huh. It's very clear looking back, as I think about this hit my history around mental health a lot. And um, there was a very clear time when I was seven. And, you know, everything was absolutely fine up until then. Again, first grade was a little tricky. And then in second grade, I had this horrible teacher who was really abusive to me and so mean to me. And I would cry every single day. So it was triggered definitely by the stress of that situation. But it was a very, very big reaction that was extreme. And I cried every day. My parents were desperate, like they didn't know what to do. And this was in the 70s. So there wasn't that sense about children and therapy and medication and things like that. So it went untreated. It was just a torturous, torturous year. And then did you feel like things escalated towards your teens? Sixth grade started to get really, I mean, extreme extreme anxiety attacks with, um, I would have hives on my body. It was really bad crying again. And then, so it was intermittent and a little bit better, you know, 12, 13, 14, and then 15, 16, started to take a dive. And then at 17, it was just very extreme. That was my first suicide attempt. So tell me about a typical day then at 17. I was in complete blackness. I was constantly, constantly thinking about suicide and I was um, not sleeping, just I don't know how I functioned. And I think that that's a reality for a lot of people. Mm. They can be functioning alcoholics and have an eating disorder and be functioning, but you're really only half there. Like when you're having that level of anxiety attacks and you're not sleeping, I mean, just sleep deprivation alone plays such a role. And then to be running that tape of scared, desperate thoughts. Do you remember the moment when you decided I'd rather just end it? Yes. Yeah, I guess it kind of like took over my life, planning it, like took over my life. And um, And were you planning this for weeks? Yeah, months, months and thinking about it for months. And then, yeah. And so it's, it's a little scary that it was so easy and calm. It's scary that that was like that. It was like just this is the night. I think it was a Sunday night and that was it. And... You know, I had the pills. I went to bed, took the pills. And it was easy to do. It wasn't hard to do. It's like, that's, that's, wow. What would you say to her now? You know, not to be hiding all of my feelings and all of my insecurities and all of my fears, not to be hiding, to share them and to communicate them and to be more open about that. Mm. And that's hard. I mean, even now as an, at like, are we 40 this year? Like when stuff goes bad, like it's so, I I do reach out and I know all the right things to do as you do, but even now it's still hard in all of these years since. Like you mentioned that you've had some relapses, particularly mm-hmm. with the eating disorder. So, and I know that um, I interviewed another lady um, who similarly getting pregnant with her first child was a huge trigger mm-hmm. because obviously you're gaining weight and it's mm-hmm. out of your control. So, what happened during that oh. period for you? I just, I'm really like hormones are my weak area of my health. Mm-hmm. And so infertility was a big deal for me. And I was on all these drugs and it made me gain weight. And so I gained a lot of weight in the first trimester, mm-hmm. a lot. And um, lost, I, I just was not doing well with it. And thank God the doctor was really on it. And he came up with this plan where, because um, they weigh you so much. Every time you go to the doctor, they weigh you. He's like, we're never going to tell you your weight till after you have the baby. Right. Even then, you don't have to know. Yeah. And he did this thing where they would weigh me. He wrote us something on my chart, and I would turn around so I couldn't see it. Great. And that worked really well. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. And even now, today, do you not have scales around? N- I never weigh like, myself. Right. Never. I, since then, since the pregnancy, and that, they taught me either. that never, <laughs> I don't know, I've never weighed myself. It's amazing. I know. And I used to weigh myself like 20 times a day when oh I was sick. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, 20 like, times a day. Oh, yeah. 
And now life's so different. Oh, that piece of it is like a dream. It's just, uh, just a dream. I really, really am so grateful. So you've been dealing with this from seven till now. We won't say where you're at, which decade you're in. Um, but <laughs> I think that, you know, you've been through it in many, many different parts of your life, mm-hmm. through teenage years, through mm-hmm. pregnancy, through motherhood, through mm-hmm. later years when hormones kick in. Mm-hmm. And so there's times when it's been worse than others. There's mm-hmm. times where you felt like you've, you're done with it and it's all okay mm-hmm. and then it comes back again, mm-hmm. um, which I think is what most people go through when it comes to mental health mm-hmm. and, and eating disorders. And that's why we have to be, an addiction, mm-hmm. we have to be so vigilant that it, it can be decades can pass and we think we've got it all together and then it just surprises mm-hmm. us. So what do you look out for? What are the kind of things that come up for you that you go, oh, hey, that's a bit of disordered thinking? Mm -hmm. I've really struggled in the past few years with the weight issue. Once I hit 45, I started to gain weight with the hormones changing. And the doctor's like, yeah, it's going to be 10 pounds a year. I'm like, are you kidding me? And that's been really hard. It's been a big challenge. And so I do have... Th- those thoughts have come back in a big way about I'm so fat, like a lot, a lot. But I talk to my friends about it. I talk to myself about it. Mm. A lot of self-talk. Yeah. Like, and, and, um, yeah, I, I, but it's been, I have to be honest that the past five years, it's been hard work mm. to, stay on top of it and to just, but it's very, it's very, I've got my system down where it's very relaxed. And I, like I said, I don't starve myself. I don't diet. And I just try and work on self-love and self-acceptance. You know, you saying that it's hard work. I think that's something that people need to get to that this, I mean, relationships with other people, with partners, with ourselves. none of that is easy Um, just like a job or a career. Like I think anything we want in life when it comes to spiritual Mm -hmm. growth and and true personal growth Mm -hmm. is hard work. Mm -hmm. And you have to put time and energy into Mm -hmm. recognizing what you're thinking. As you said, you've been able to be happy for decades and not feel depressed because Mm -hmm. you are vigilant. Mm -hmm. You haven't had the regressions that you could have had Mm -hmm. because you put the time and energy into connecting with yourself through yoga Um, You talk with your friends. And I think those are all beautiful things. But by owning who you are, you've been able to be happier. Right. Well, and in terms of of my job and having to be in, you know, I'm I'm affiliated with a lot of institutions and balancing that. I mean, the bottom line here is um, I can't go to these dark places of helping, you know, advocate for people in prison or people with serious mental illness or homelessness when my light isn't turned on. I require a lot of light and juice to be able to face those issues. Yeah. So while it might be, oh, she's dancing on a table mm-hmm. again, I, I have to keep myself yeah. totally yeah. on top of my game. Which again is a recognition of like what are going to be my triggers. Right. I know that if I give yes. too much, if I have no energy, if I'm depleted, right. if I don't exercise, if I right. travel on planes all week, if right. I go to prisons. Um, I'm not going to have very much left and there's a good chance that that's when you'll go down that dangerous path. So do you do a check-in? Like, are you conscious of it? Is it sort of at night? Like, how am I feeling? Like, this was a really long day. Do I need to put in a few days off in the calendar? It, for me, it's really every minute. Like, it's not, it's not. So it's the, become it's a, like a way of life. A way of life. The way you would say, oh, the way you'd be aware of your blood sugar if you had diabetes or your heart, if you had heart disease, your cholesterol or those so kinds of how things. How different is that? compared to where you were at 17. Uh, do you feel like it's a different brain? Uh, yeah, I do. I, my, I, I have, yes, I have a different brain. Yeah. yeah. So it's that person. So what's been the greatest gift from this experience? I guess for knowing that level of, that depth of darkness, the greatest gift has been my ability to hold space for others around that and to be able to do this work in the world. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that nothing that shake that rattles me nothing so what would you say to someone who's picking up the pills today and or is planning in their head their suicide i would try to connect because the isolation is it's it's lethal the isolation Mm -hmm. so i wouldn't judge 
I wouldn't say things like, oh, it's going to get better. Don't worry. Like all that, you know, because when you're in that spot, you just want to be seen and heard and ha- have the space held for you in where you're at. Mm-hmm. Well, I have so loved having oh, you here and thank learning you. from you. Thank, thank you. you thank you for being here. Oh, mm-hmm. this is not easy and you made it so comfortable. So thank you for being here, guys. And I hope that you have learned something really amazing from Janine's story. If you're dealing with mental health, if you're suffering from suicidal thinking or an eating disorder, reach out, get help. There is support out there. Do your work, do your self-work, figure out what your triggers are and figure out how you can be healthy, happy and whole and move forward. We'll see you next time on Kirsty TV. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, tweet us, Facebook us, and we'll see you soon. Uh, I started having massive outbursts with anger. I was breaking my knuckles and toes, punching and kicking things, and then I just. And are people having, seeing this? Yeah, yeah, my friends saw it, but again, it's like um, a bunch of teenage boys aren't going to be.